a successful operation on Russian soil. After more than two years of fighting almost exclusively on Ukrainian soil, had psychological value for Kiev, boosting the morale of Ukrainian troops and civilians while portraying Putin and his military as weak and ineffective. The Washington Post article reports that the sudden breakthrough of the Ukrainian armed forces is the most serious challenge for President Putin since the Wagner Rebellion. Kiev's successes are raising the morale of Ukrainian troops and civilians, but at the same time are hitting the reputation of the Russian government and military hard. It is emphasized that if Russian troops continue to advance at the same speed as in other areas, they will need a year to recapture the lost territories in the Kursk region. Moreover, as the publication points out, the Ukrainian armed forces have already occupied more than 20 Russian border villages and parts of at least one city and are now advancing toward the Kursk nuclear power plant. The article notes that Ukrainian brigades will have time to dig in at fortified positions, which will potentially give Kiev a powerful trump card in the event of a future ceasefire or peace talks. Ukrainian forces have clearly advanced quite far into the Kursk region, but how much territory they control or actually intend to control remains unknown, said Michael Kaufman, a senior fellow at the Carnegie Endowment for International Peace. The border breakthrough in the Kursk region has forced the Russian forces to redeploy their reserves from other front lines, particularly from the Donetsk region. This shift could potentially benefit Ukrainian defenders. One of the Russian military correspondents noted that the column entering from the Belgorod region included makeshift fire support vehicles based on the MTLB as well as 152mm MSTAS howitzers. Additionally, the Russian Pyat Nashka Brigade, which had previously been involved in battles near Chasiv Yar in the Donetsk region, has reported its arrival in the Kursk region. According to Russian media, there were other military convoys transferred to the Kursk region to contain the so-called breakthrough in the Sudza area. Despite Russia's claim of control over the situation in the Kursk region, Moscow fears that F-16 fighter jets might be used there, the Telegraph informs. According to the news agency, the events in the Kursk region were unexpected for the Russian command. In particular, this incursion turned out to be one of the largest land attacks on mainland Russia since Putin ordered the full-scale invasion of Ukraine in February 2022. This operation was likely prepared in advance. Ukraine had moved air defense systems to the border to protect its forces. There is also concern among the Russian forces that recently acquired F-16 fighter jets might be involved in the fighting. Later, Russian President Vladimir Putin appointed Russian Deputy Prime Minister Denis Manturov as the overseer of the defense of the Kursk region. Additionally, Russian military officials reacted angrily to the Ministry of Defense's failure to secure Kursk. On August the 6th, Several media outlets began reporting that Ukrainian forces had allegedly breached the border and taken control of several settlements in the Kursk region as of August the 7th. Information about the fighting for the city of Sudza, located nine kilometers from the border, began to spread in the media. Russia has accused Ukrainian troops of crossing the border into its Kursk region, 
which, if confirmed, marks the first incursion of its kind from Ukraine and puts pressure on Moscow in an area largely unaffected by the two-year war. The Russian Ministry of Defense, the Russian Investigative Committee and the Russian Ombudsman for Children all said Ukrainian forces had launched a massive attack attempting to break through the Russian defenses on the borders of the Kursk region, which sits just north of Ukraine's Sumy region. Russian President Vladimir Putin called the alleged incursion a large-scale provocation, saying Kyiv conducted indiscriminate shooting from various types of weapons, including missiles, at civilian buildings, residential buildings and ambulances. The extent of the attack, including whether Ukrainian troops took over any settlements or caused damage to any strategic targets, remains unclear. It is also not clear whether any Ukrainian soldiers remained on Russian territory.